Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Joy of Stick. Stickhead here with your Atari ST gaming channel and today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Now I know this is an Atari ST gaming channel but there's part of the Atari ST that was really important to me and probably really important to every ST owner uh, and that was the GM desktop, the operating system of the Atari ST computer itself. So I thought we'd have a quick look at that. Um, now, all but the earliest STs came with their operating systems actually loaded onto the ROM chips. So all you needed to do was switch the computer on, uh, and as long as you didn't have a disk in the drive, or as long as your disk didn't have any auto-booting programs on, you'd you'd be kicked into this here, the little green desktop. And what a beauty it is, eh? <laughs> uh, now, I kind of get the impression that Atari to keep costs down, I mean after all their slogan was power without the price, kind of uh, cobbled together um, <laughs> the Atari ST operating system, of lots of different off the shelf components that they could get their hands on rather than kind of going to the expense of developing it themselves from scratch. So I mean that has its obvious advantages, um, it was cheap <laughs> and kept the price of the computer down. Um, but it does, you know, there are a number of bugs and quite a lot of clunkiness to the GEM desktop uh, which might not have been there if it was custom built, but still I mean, if you think about the cost compared to other Windows operated computers that were around at the time um, the NST cost a fraction of those, so yeah, still Now, uh, the operating system of an Atari ST consists of a a few different bits and bobs. Um, there's GEM, which is what we're looking at now, the graphical user interface, the desktop itself, but there's also another part to TOS, which is the operating system. Um, I think uh, the creative department of Atari were on holiday when they came up with that acronym. But yeah, that TOS is also consisted of the BIOS, the XBIOS, and GEM DOS, uh, and they that's how the user and the programs interface with the machine so BIOS um, uses things like uh, outputs things to the screen XBIOS does things like uh, operates you know the disk drive and stuff like that and, and GEM is the graphical user interface that sits on top of those uh, looking pretty and making it easy to access the functions of your machine so while as GEM certainly wasn't the first ever uh, WIMP user interface. I mean, that's uh, Windows icons, mouse pointer interface. Uh, I think uh, Xerox came up with the first or something, maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and also <laughs> Apple fanboys will probably uh, like to claim that this is a complete and utter ripoff of the early Macintosh user interface. And to be honest, they're probably right. Because <laughs> I mean, Apple did try and sue uh, Digital Research Inc. Um, the pro, the developers of GEM um, because of how similar it looked and felt to the Mac desktop and to a certain extent they were successful DRA had to change a number of things about the GEM uh, desktop going forwards but th this was after they'd licensed it to Atari so I mean you still see the trash bin here and other things that are very similar to the Mac desktop that uh, DRA later changed for other versions of GEM because GEM did appear on other machines it wasn't just on the ST I mean you can get it on IBM compatible PCs and I think Amstrad even released some uh, PCs with it pre-installed um, I'd love to get my hands on one of those but they're really bizarre but yeah I think the ST was the only place where GEM really gained any traction and certainly this great bright green glowing desktop became synonymous with the ST and uh, Atari would stick with GEM uh, going forward as they released other computers like the TT and the Falcon but yeah so the fir first release of GEM as we know on an Atari was back in uh, 1985 
and after that obviously it underwent lots of revisions and updates fixing lots of bugs adding features for the new machines like the, the ones I mentioned the TT and the Falcon and stuff like that but mostly it stayed the same um, you know you talk about the desktop paradigm um, this is pretty much it um, and really it's quite amazing how little has changed I mean I'm emulating this ST on Steam but if I look outside of the Steam window and look around there's still there's still a trash bin on my desktop there's still icons that represent places on my computer uh, and there's still a menu bar for me to go to to do further things so it's amazing how much has stayed the same uh, it's been very much a case of slow evolution rather than, than revolution with the desktop paradigm and I think the kind of resistance we've seen to like the new Windows user interface, the Metro interface and things like that and how Linux desktops have recently tried to change it, how Ubuntu has tried to change things and people have rebelled against those kind of things. I think it shows they just got it right and <laughs> they just got it right from the off pretty much. It's just a case of refining it. But anyway, before we dive in, it's worth mentioning that um, the development of GEM didn't stop when Atari stopped making uh, computers. Um, not long after that, the um, the source code of GEM was actually made open source. It was released under the um, uh, GNU license or whatever it's called, uh, and development of it continued. Um, so you can actually get it. Uh, running on PCs and the, I mean the greatest thing about that being open source is that um, enterprising programmers have um, reported that back to ST that open source code back to ST um, thanks to the Emutos project which now means you can emulate um, Atari computers without infringing any copyright at all which is fantastic for projects such as cold fire and stuff like that you know um yeah anyway <laughs> i've waffled on enough should we uh should we dive in and have a little look so yeah if you switch on an atari st without a disk drive without a disk in the drive rather um then <laughs> well actually it takes about 15 20 seconds for the sd to realize there isn't a disk in the drive and then it boots you into um the default desktop which will look very similar to this now if you do have a disk in the drive and it's got an auto booting program in there then it will launch that instead it won't go to the desktop at all but if the disk in the drive doesn't have any auto booting programs then you you, you come back to a, a desktop similar to this all right let's have a look then so what have we got what can we see already we can see the menus up the top um, we can see uh, the disk drive icons here for A and B now even if you only had one uh, disk drive on your Atari ST you didn't have an additional external disk drive you would still see two excuse me still see two icons here uh, and and that's so you could actually get functionality of two disk drives with using just one which was quite a clever little thing so if you were to copy something from disk A to disk B let's give you a little example and I haven't got anything in the disk drive, hang on a second let's put something in uh, like so okay oh, oh, that alarm beep, that's quite sharp that isn't it <laughs> yeah so if you were to copy something from disk A to, to disk B even though you only had one uh, disk in the drive like this for example it'd come up and it'd say oh, no it wouldn't say that, it'd say uh, insert disk B now um, so you could actually switch between the two which is which was very nice very useful um, yeah so here you go you double click on the disk drive icons to open the disks uh, and then you can see the files and folders on that disk so the folders are here you can see they look like folders the files here looking like files now executables have a different icon 
So, oh, there you go. Uh, .prg files are executables. Uh, there are other execu uh, ex executables too, but uh, they all have this kind of funny icon here that looks actually a bit like the the window. But there you go. So fantastic! It tells you how many bytes are used and how many items are in the current folder. You saw me double click on a folder there to go in and click on the close window <laughs> uh, icon here to go back a stage. And if you're in the root directory, when you when you click that, it closes the whole thing. Now you can make this full full screen, so you can see a bit more. You can move the window around and oh, and resize it too. And now the trash. The trash doesn't work like a Windows recycle bin. You can't open it and see what's in there. It really is just a way of deleting something, which I can show you actually um, later. Um, okay, so yeah, let's look at the menus. The desktop info would tell you about well, not a lot really. <laughs> Copyright information, and you can see that, that I'm con currently running Rainbow Toss. Uh, which has the, this kind of rainbow effect on the Atari Fuji logo. Um, original, the very first ones didn't have that. Um, but it doesn't actually tell you which version of TOS is running, which would have been very helpful. doesn't do that. Uh, just under here will be um, what's called desktop accessories. Now, the Atari ST doesn't have... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? multitasking not in the truest sense um, but it does have these desk accessories so you can you can be running a gem um, application um, in the full screen gem application and then access other smaller programs by um, clicking it up here on the desktop accessories um, this one here is called steno and it's um, it's basically just a notepad for making notes and things like that, saving and opening text files. I want to show you that in action, actually. So let's um, let's install my emulated hard disk, shall we? Oh, that key click! <laughs> oh, it brings back memories. What a fantastic sound! I tell you what, though, I wouldn't want to type up a 10,000 word dissertation without going on in the background. Okay, here we go. So let's open what have I got? I've got a dev pack. So, yeah, if you're doing a bit of programming, you wouldn't do programming in this low resolution, but never mind. <laughs> Just for uh, demonst demonstrative purposes. So, if you were doing some programming here and you were like, oh, oh, I know. I had the document that I that told me how to do this next step. You could use Stenographer to open it up and find it and load it up. Uh, and yeah, so pick it, load it up, and off you go. You could see it and then use that in your program, which is unfortunately the only way to do rudimentary multitasking on the ST. Uh, yep. So yeah, there you go. Uh, what else can we look at? Let's have a look. File. So yeah, you, here you can create new folders um, and close the window if you couldn't find this icon here. Um, and this is how you rename files as well. You show info and you can rename it here like so. Except I won't. It obviously tells you more information. You can change the attributes of the file, etc. Uh, something else that was very useful um, is that you could switch to text because I mean the icons do look lovely, very nice bitmap icons, but you can't see a lot and you can't see any information. So it was often useful to um, go to text view instead, so you could see more files and you could see information about their size and the date they were last uh, modified. Uh, you do your sorting here as well, dot by s sort by date, size and type. Folders would always sort at the top. Uh, now here we go, setting preferences. 
so this is cool you could speed things up if you're doing a lot of file um, operations you could click no to the confirmations that would speed things up nicely uh, and you can also change resolution now I'm emulating a color monitor at the moment so I can only choose low and medium but uh, on a high resolution monitor you could have had high resolution only fantastic what else have we got then oh yeah you could save the desktop so if you could set up your windows how you wanted to so if you didn't want to constantly be um, selecting text and sorting by size you wanted it like that all the time you can save the desktop and then next time you reboot let's see if I can do that next time you reboot oh of course I've still got the disk in the drive hang on a second let's take that out and the next time you reboot it would open up exactly as you saved it which was very very useful um, especially as you saw I had to install uh, this hard disk I mean it only took a couple of clicks and typing but so you don't want to do that every time you want access to your hard disk do you so that's nice now that I'm emulating an STE at the moment so you can see there's um, the option to switch the blitter on and off and that was just um, a piece of hardware that made uh, the Windows update a bit quicker um, and you, it was used in games to help scrolling and uh, sprite movements and stuff like that okay and you can print screen as well which is nice never used that because I hardly ever used a printer but yeah nice little option to have there uh, I was going to show you how to delete files now um, what can I delete oh yeah let's delete this temporary file here so you, the way you delete things you I mean you can't just press delete on the keyboard that does nothing so you have to drag it to the trash and it'll ask you do you want to delete and there we go it's gone and you can do the same for folders too and as I said before that I mean this doesn't work like a recycle bin on a Windows machine that is literally gone <laughs> permanently deleted ah. <clears throat> I'm trying to think what else to show you at this point I mean can I can I remember the f <laughs> yes I can a couple of keyboard shortcuts that I used to use you can only select one file at a time unless you drag like so to uh, to select more than one but if you hold down shift you can actually select multiple files and then drag all of those it's worth pointing out actually that you can't drag programs or files onto the desktop that doesn't work um, I think they introduced that much later in TOS revisions but yeah you can't on this one and look there's that accessory file steno that because it's on the uh, root directory of my hard disk it, it pops up here all right fantastic I think that's a pretty decent first overview of uh, uh, gem uh, if you like what you see let me know uh, if you enjoyed using gem when you had an Atari ST write in the comments tell us what you used to do with it uh, if you want to see some more let me know because I mean there's a few tips and tricks about gem uh, that are valuable so if you want to hear some of those then let me know and I'll, I'll post another video but there you go there is the gem desktop um, it's absolutely iconic to me and my memories of the Atari ST these icons and this colour will indel <laughs> is indelibly marked on my soul I think um, such a fantastic little environment to grow up with and, and learn computing from because as I say very little has changed really if you think about it anyway thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed that uh, and if you've enjoyed this kind of different take on my videos if you like you know looking at some the more serious side of computing but not really very serious but you know what I mean if you enjoyed it let me know and I'll do some more thanks for watching guys take care